Your network is a very complex ecosystem of technology. There are routers and switches, all kinds of different applications going through the network. So there's really a big requirement to make sure that your network is running at peak performance. One of the major reasons for this, of course, is to keep everything running, is the uptime of your network. Very often, that is your number one priority as a network administrator. You want to be sure when somebody sits down at their computer and they start up an application that everything is going to work properly across the network. And now that we're doing so many things over the network and certainly out to the internet, it becomes even more important that our network is working 100% of the time. Because of this, we build our networks with redundancy and resiliency so that if there is a problem in any particular part of the network, we have systems and procedures in place to make sure that that particular outage or downtime is either non-existent or greatly minimized. We're doing a lot more these days with imaging and hospitals. There's remote training like this one that requires a lot of bandwidth for video and for audio. And as those high bandwidth applications begin to use the network, just a few of those running can really take up a large amount of your bandwidth. So it becomes even more important to make sure that your network is optimized so that every application running over the network is going to run properly. Optimization of your network is not just optimizing the amount of bandwidth available. There's other things you should look at as well. One of those is latency. If your network becomes so busy that it takes a long time to get a packet out and a long time to get a packet in response, your applications are going to be performing slower and slower and slower. And if you're running an application that needs to be updated in real time, maybe you're looking at a stock ticker and you need to know immediately when changes are occurring on the stock market, then a slower network is going to be a big problem for those types of applications. We're now deploying so much voice over IP on our networks, our telephones on our desk, or voice over IP telephones. We're using voice over IP applications like Skype. So there's a big requirement that not only do we maintain available bandwidth and we make sure that latency is low, we're looking for a constant stream of data coming through. If you're communicating with somebody over voice, if you lose just a few packets in between or the time between packets begins longer and longer and longer, then it becomes very difficult to maintain a conversation. And with voice over IP, you're looking at data that you have to keep within a quarter of a second to be able to really understand what's going on. When we have large deviations in time between packets, with voice over IP, we call that jitter. And when you have a lot of jitter on the network, it becomes increasingly difficult to have a conversation. And these voice conversations can be very, very important. You don't want to have a problem with your voice communication. So you have to make sure your network is optimized and able to adjust in times when you need that type of throughput and constant type of bandwidth for your voice over IP applications. Another obvious example is video applications. We're doing streaming video. If you're watching this video, it's something that's not in real time. So there's a buffer involved. It's using a lot of bandwidth, but it doesn't have a lot of requirements for latency. Your network can be very slow because you've buffered things up. You never notice that there's any problem with the latency. But if it's a real-time video application, you're watching a real-time news event, you're watching a sporting event, and it's being streamed to you live, any type of latency is going to really disrupt the communication, and you're not going to be able to follow along with the video communication. We have to keep that in mind as we begin optimizing our networks and applying different techniques to be assured that all of these applications will be able to communicate successfully through our network.